Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, where I'm always excited to introduce the player ranked number one in the world by Dark. It is the final boss. It's Dark, with a hatchery conspicuously close to the base of the best player from the United States of America. It is Estrella, the Battle Mage, a best of three ZVP starting off probably how many of you expected it to be, as Dark slaps a hatchery down right in Estrella's face. And now Estrella's gonna have to figure out a way to deal with it. And quickly. Which is how fast and how much time I have to beg you for likes and subscribes. And Jimmy, I know it wasn't smooth. One, 1,289 likes on this video, on this cast, on this series. And I'll cast another one. And I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better as a little bit of damage is all that Australia has been able to do so far getting a zealot out starts a forge behind that's a that's a drone oh he's not done it's a spine crawler rush behind dark with the chiropractor attack timing the spines for queen in production this is not something meant to distract Australia. he's going to attempt to kill him with the spines here and Australia with Kind of a half-hearted response so far. Did not build a stalker. He built an adept instead. Adept's not so great against the spine crawlers. Of course, if they're not done yet, that's a big part of it. And the queen is about to pop out and get off my creep. The HOA, the Hatchery Owners Association, says that anything within 12 range of a hatchery is Zerg. I don't... Take it up with the council. Not the twilight. I don't... <clears throat> Uh, Dark with a, a queen out now, able to drive away the adepts. I, and the adepts kind of tucked in, but adepts, again, not really an ideal response to the spine crawlers. And, and Estrella has no more tech behind. He's building cannons, but the spine crawlers moving up, and the gateway and the cyber core are actually going to block out some of these Protoss units. There's a Baneling Nest very conspicuously in the production tab behind. So Dark may want to bust his way through. He should be able to. Mr. Zergachev, tear down this wall. And, uh, sorry. Um, as the cyber core itself is under attack, has to reshield it with, with the uh, shield battery, which quickly drains all of its energy. This mine core, a little distracted, will kill an adept. But Estrella, very importantly, will be finishing Warp Gate. Which is a bit ridiculous that that was a risk, but a lair is on the way for Dark. I think he saw the. He's gonna go for Sloverlord drops. Oh my god, this is disgusting. In the most beautiful, like. It's like. It's like. Um, licking your fingers after having some cool ranch Doritos. Uh, which you know is gross and you shouldn't do, but I mean, well, I guess the, the somewhat cheesy metaphor really does work here. As the forge is being poked down, typical group project, one out of three spines participating, the other two watching on, nodding approvingly and pretending to participate. Only one of them is hard-headed enough, but Astrea has no vision of this at all. And what is in the dark of his base? Ooh, I kind of boxed myself into a corner with this pun. Hmm. Well, what is dark can hurt him. Hmm, I don't love it. And Estrella will not be loving this either. When he's about to get three Slovies, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how fast the Ovis are. If they're already on the edge of the base, he's going to be unloading them here. And there's essentially no defense. He's building three gates. He wants to slap down a robo. Astraeus just trying to get back to sanity here. But Dark is taking him further down the rabbit hole. As now, more Ovi's loaded up. Astraea. Oh no. The lings and banes in the main. A dozen cannons at the natural. But that's not going to do anything to save his main base here. The bane lings. And Tommy's slowly warping at a sentry. Oh my god! I don't think Dark noticed. There's. Estrella has 40 probes right now to Dark's 18 drums. So Estrella. Well, Dark is on one base economy, make no mistake. Will he start mining from. I don't know where he's going with this. 
Oh, he's just sending it home. Now he just needs to drop a, a drone in the main base and take that as well. Keep the, the Protoss lore accurately refugees here. As the Zerg just take everything. Is he evacuating his units out of the base? Job's finished! <laughs> oh, the... Dun, 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 dun. Well, this is kind of... <laughs> He's pretending like there's nothing in there. Astraea has to assume there are mainlings inside the Overlord, and indeed there are. But the sentry's out of position now, and here comes Dark from absolutely everywhere else. There's the force field, but kind of a barn door situation there. And the mainlings do come out of the Overlord. Another one on the ramp. The force field did something. He killed nine probes, which means Astraea plummets to a 10-worker lead. Well, this... Huh. There's double Stargate. Astraea expands to his main. Dark expands to his natural for his third base. The double Void Ray is actually a real concern. The back creeping here is also doing well. There's a queen in this overlord, and he can drop creep. So I think he wanted to creep inside his main. Um, Dark quite a creeper himself, but... Well, the queen has dropped out. There's only one queen, which the Void Race should be able to deal with. But the creep tumor is morphing. There's no getting out targets down the tumor. I don't... Avenge me! We'll come back for you, Brenda. Oh, metaphoric. I don't... <clears throat> Void Race, take it out. We'll see that Astray is re-expanding, but Dark is... He's using the larva. He's about to be supply block. So... Now we're eight minutes in. Dark is supply blocked at 43 over 42 supply. Astraea helping him with that a bit. Um, Astraea has double Stargate, eight cannons. Um, well, two queens should be enough. Well, two queens can kind of deal with this. Thing is, the queens are much less costly than the void race. So, every point of hull damage, even if he kills some of the queens, is going to be meaningful. And a Hydra Den on the way. I. This is one of the most unique scenarios that I've ever seen. Dark has not quite killed Astray. Astray has kept his cool throughout this. He, he did not panic. In fact, I feel like he underreacted somewhat to the Spinecrawler rush. If he had built some stalkers or rushed a robo or something like that, maybe he could have just broken it outright. But he kept his probes alive. He's calmly re-expanding to his main. Is even on workers. And, well, besides the pretty conspicuous hatchery here, um, is has taken map control. So Dark, of course, working on his four corners bingo strategy, uh, we'll expand to the bottom left. That'll put him about halfway there. The Void Rays and Oracles. Well, the Hatchery will be targeted now. The Oracles can use Revelation to start to uncover some of those creep tumors. Another Overlord going to be taken down. Dark. Quite can... He has Burrow done. Wait, did he get Burrow? No, he can't. He, he started Burrow, and then he canceled it. And now he's starting it again. Dark works in mysterious ways. He's now double expanding. Dark is going up to six hatcheries. Though I doubt most of them will survive. Um, as the one at the front at the very least. Ten minutes in, it will be removed. Wow. Huh. Robo Bay is on the way. The burrow will be finished. There there should be detection. He does have uh, an observer on the way as well. Astrea! I both... I kind of... I, I love it, and I am concerned by it. That he's just, like... He's just pretending like this is a normal game now, pretty much. A as close as he can. He's clearing the creep. He's working on Colossi to counter the Hydras. Um, he has gone double robo. Effectively mech toss here. I don't believe... There's the only gateway unit is a singular sentry. The singular survival of the initial onslaught of the first 10 minutes. And here we are. Oh my god. 
dark. The, well, the creep is cleared. Why would I look in this corner? Oh, and what he doesn't know, as we've already established at great and awkward length, can hurt you. All right. That, that hatchery is a significant part of this game right now. As Estrella thinks he's working with most of the information. He knows Dark has taken a third. Using that white raw announcer. Good choice. Oh, the stasis on the high ground, though. And Stark not paying any attention at all. But he does catch a Void Ray. So even though the stasis hits, um, there's really not enough left over to deal with this until the Colossi are on the field. There are two of them now. That single sentry remains the only gateway unit. It doesn't even have... He has four warp gates. The map is slowly but surely turning back into something that makes sense with a significant asterisk here in the bottom left corner. So Dark has had 52 workers building 10 more and he starts a hive. Not sure what he wants to do with it, but uh, vipers are always a strong choice. Another state. These stasises are almost too good. When you catch most of their units, you suddenly don't, like, you can't kill them. They're frozen. A Lurker Den is on the way. A Queen getting melted by the Oracles, but actually doesn't go down. The Lurker Den, on the other hand, not canceled. Astrea, another Queen, just kind of happens by. And finally, the Oracles will be driven out. But for Colossi, Guardian Shield used. I'm not sure. Oh, he, he burnt out a lot of those Hydras. Actually, no, he hasn't. He hasn't killed a single Hydra, which I find hard to believe. But apparently, that's what the numbers say. I guess they got away. Well. That bottom left corner continues to be the defining uh, part of the game so far. Well, hatchery is in unexpected and, and uncomfortable locations, I think is how we could summarize it. Oracle's coming in, but the Hydra's... Group spawns very done. The very first basic upgrades will be finishing soon. Plus one ground weapons for Astrea. And uh, plus one ranged attack for Dark, who is still comfortably mining from that bottom left corner. He's just got mass hydra. He's building three vipers. Those are four colossi. On paper, Astrea has, like, like with plus one, there's no way you fight that. He requires the vipers. I think Dark agrees. He's going to give up the base. Sets up a massive concave here. He desperately needs abduct. He needs to deal with those colossi. Four colossi will just melt the entirety of those. All right, does he have the energy? Well, some of the hydras at the back. A bit of an awkward fight from Astrea. That warp prism in a bit of a uh, less than ideal location. He can use the warp prism to try to save the colossi. He does. He juggles back. Beautiful micro from Astrea. But the Zerglings! Look at what Dark is doing with the Zerglings! Dark distracted the Colossi! And Dark with Zerglings and Hydralis, which on the Prima strategy guide are the hard count- Well, Colossi are the hard counters. But there's no such thing as a hard counter when facing such a slippery target as Dark. He manages to- So, so with Estrella focusing his micro on keeping the Colossi alive, he wasn't target firing. And Dark was kind of dancing Zerglings back and forth on the northern side. Just a handful of units and about half the Colossi, who are incredibly easily distracted. We're not firing at the main brunt of the Hydras. So Dark is still very much in the game. In fact, he has the supply lead. What? Uh, he... That bottom left corner. I can't believe this game has gone on 15 minutes and it could easily go. 15 more at this stage. Like, as we slowly but surely that the big issue for Astrea is if the game goes on significantly longer and then he scouts that bottom left base, there's a chance Dark just mines it out. It takes like 12 or so minutes to mine out a base if you have all the workers there. Uh, so, and he's, well, he doesn't have a full set, but he is mining the gas, and that is by far the most important. I think very intentionally not trying to creep spread or anything over there. I can't, like...
Storm on the way. I swear needs to scout that base. Like, <laughs> that that is how much... How many gases does he have right now? He's got 10. 10. 1, 0. I think he's going on 12 extractors. That is a redonkulous amount of gas. Astrea's doing pretty well himself, but he doesn't realize that Dark is on 5 base gas right now. In fact, Dark is struggling for minerals. Is the issue, which is a good problem to have when you're going lurkers. Oh my god. And he gets through again. Astrea down 40 supply at the moment. The changeling's taken out. I can't, like, this is a, a, a bronze league here. Well, this is like a big brain Wigs of Liberty strat. This doesn't work anymore. You can't just put a base down. Pro players will scout. Look, Australia's scouting right now. There's no reason you'd scout that corner. That's the thing. And this game, it, it I think in like a normal quote-unquote game, where Dark hadn't done a proxy hatch into killing Astrea's main, Astrea would have scouted there by now. But this game has been so off kilter that here we are. And that's a lot of lurkers. And now we just gotta treat it. Well, like all things are relatively even. There's a fleet beacon on the way. There's still a bunch of cannons at the natural to backstop this. Remnants of cheese's past. War prism? No, three hal what? Three hallucinated phoenixes kind of congregating in the main. Gonna spot the spire timing. He knows a, a hive is already done. That is so many lurkers. He's, he's gonna have 30 lurkers. That is an obscene amount of lurkers. The, in fact, he can't actually fit in the area. Like, there are too many lurkers burrowed. He has to find more space. And Astrea's like, wait a second. I can't actually fight this. He's using storms, but it takes three storms to kill a lurker. Yanks out another immortal. Slices it. The vipers still find their way in. Feedback comes through, but, but misses the mark. Disruptor shot chunks up some more lurkers. But Dark has the economy to just keep doing this. Another Ruptor. Astrea has, has whittled down the lurker count dramatically. But wait, there's more! Oh my god, he's just building mass lurker. I... There's still 19 on the field, he's building 6 more. He has just a ridiculous amount of gas. Alright, he could quarter the market and drive up the price at his leisure at the mar at the moment. It was 7 base gas? That's just disgusting. I bet... 6 bases going on 7. Carriers and Immortals are on the way, which on paper, again, which we don't play tabletop here. Um, but is on paper the right way to deal with this. Another Colossus pulled out, but does get away just in time. Disruptor shots. Dark tries to move away, but finally cleaning up these Lurkers. And Astrea is starting to get enough supply to fight back. Even if he never scouts the base. At the end of the day, if he's able to get close to 200 supply Protoss, especially with carrier and mothership support, that is still an incredibly difficult proposition to deal with. But he's working his way through the fourth. It's dark here. Colossus! Pulled out, knocked down. Disruptor shots. Don't really find the mark. Oh no, a slow warp and the pylon just slightly out of position. Oh no, the probes. The probes. The probes! Well, probes are transferring. Australia getting desperate. A mothership comes out at the last. You need the cloak! Use the cloak! Oh my god! Disruptor shots! Where's the cloak? He uses it. There's no detection here on a dark. He has to go for the mothership, but the cloak. What a save! But, like, did it need to be so dramatic? And Dark has three out of the four corners now. And are we counting? I don't think we can count him taking the main base of Astrea earlier on. I don't, I don't think we count that. But, Will, is this the... If there was ever a moment for Astrea to try for another base and find that base in the ba back left, it's now. Like, if he's looking for a location. Oh, my God. The stasis force field is huge here. Yanks out a carrier. Feedback on the Viper, but it's already too little and too late. 
Dark close again with the Hydralis. The Mothership. Time Warp zones out. Changelings, I'm not sure who they're hurting more. The Mothership chased down beautiful storms from Australia. As he's trying to hold the line. But Dark's moment, I can't believe. Dark just played the entirety of the game. He went from the most all-in super cheese to fighting directly against the late game. Hallucinated Archons. But Astrea will go the entire game in the dark. He never scouted it. Upgrade has been completed. Time to show new skill. It's an absolute disaster. Dark, with mind games so good, his opponent doesn't even know he's being mind game. So, well. Um, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad for Estrella because I think if he scouted that, that's just such a mental blow. I think it might be better for him going into game two that he didn't scout it because Otherwise, the emotional damage. <laughs> Astrea tried to just play a normal, sane game. But. Gimme, please. But here we are. Astrea going for a neck. Okay, well. It's like, well, Nexus first it is. So. So much for that idea. Nexus first. Well, Dark has all of his hatcheries on his own side of the map now. Very important distinction. My god. I feel like every single time, or at least every other time I cast Dark, I'm like, that is the most Dark game I've ever seen. And even though it sounds like clickbait, that doesn't mean it's not true. Oh my. Proxy hatch, spine crawler bust into slipping in the back door with some zerglings, into stealing your lunch money, I mean the, the bottom left base, into mass lurkers. Dark playing 4D chess and slapping Astrea repeatedly across the face at the same time. Well. On Oceanborn, Astrea is going to be allowed to get Warp Gate uncontested. <laughs> Wait, he's building ten lings, though. Okay, maybe not entirely uncontested. But for the most part, there's no Stargate out of Astrea. He went for the Nexus first. So, that means he's left with just these gateways. We'll see what the first tech choice is. Still conspicuously not building anything. Twilight Council and a third. Astrea is disgustingly quick. Not disgustingly quick. That's that's an unfair. That's we reserve that for dark. Uncomfortably fast third. But there's not quite enough Zerglings to uh, force a cancel on it. And now warping in some more adepts. Twilight Council, just a Twilight, so no Forge. Dark Templar, he's got a shield battery in the high ground, clearly anticipating some shenanigans. Blink and DTs. Both of these two are all over the place right now. I mean, in a fun and amazing way, but this is so far off the standard. It, this is not your three base into oracles. This is not your just three hatch into zerglings and then lair. Well, I guess technically it was three hatch into zerg. <laughs> but. Ah. Uh, yeah, the dark shrine on the way. He started blink and then canceled blink. Like he had the gas for it, but I guess. And now restarted blink. Some. Okay, well. Not. <laughs> It's like uh, Dark with the Burrow last game. But here come the Ravagers and Lynx. Astrea correctly anticipating this attack. But is there a lair out of Dark? No. Astrea just needs to hold until Dark Templar. 
which uh, he's already got the shrine to his opponent. So he's working on it. Slides out of the way. The shield batteries on the high ground should help out a lot. About 15 more seconds on the DTs. He needs them so desperately. Trying to get away from the Zerglings, pinned in the corrosive mouse. Shield battery overcharge on the high ground, a beautiful choice. And two DTs are warped in. And will they just fight? Indeed they will, Dark realizes. Will we try to hit DTs with Corrosive Bile? It's been done before. Not gonna be enough for now. Dark scrambles to get a lair, but Astraea's rush to DTs after the quick third. Definitely catching Dark off guard. He's the only one who's supposed to have shrines to himself, all right? But the Templar. He's actually just sitting back at home on defense with them. There are still so many Zerglings. They have to be respected. The probes will tuck in. And with the DTs forming that invisible wall there. Just starts a mark on He's giving Dark the benefit of the doubt. He's giving him the respect. He says, you're going to figure out a counter to DTs by the time I get across the map. So I'm not going to bother wasting them. But instead, an Archon, which doesn't have the game-winning potential of a couple Dark Templar, but is much more likely to be a useful part of the army as time goes on. Blink nearly completed. Scouts the third. Spire is on the way. Probes. Astrea already with a fourth coming up. Australia always one to expand quickly whenever possible. A very greedy pro- well, greedy or macro-oriented. Really depends on how you're trying to sell it. It's not that I'm, um, it, I, that, I wouldn't call myself a gold digger. I just look for any opportunity and am willing to compromise my morals for it. Oh, Charlie. What? Who, who jumps in at- this point it asks what Jimmy are we in the wrong I you know what I reject your reality this is hallucinated but also we're seven eight minutes into the game you know what all right anyways um I must have been hallucinating We've got 11 Mutas on the way. Dark. Now, a bit of a risk here, as maybe he was expecting a Robo behind this instead of Blink Stalkers, but Estrella went well, with a more stable option. Dark is... He doesn't have that many drones, nor... The DTs definitely took him off guard. Estrella able to get a fourth base, able to get all his infrastructure up. Now, runs the risk of letting Dark survive too long. He has not anticipated the Mutas, it seems, as he's building a Robo and a Robo Bay, a second Robo alongside his Robo Bay. So those are not the actions of someone who has Mutas flying towards their base right now. But Estrella trying to fill in that entire tech tree. Check it all off the Prima Strategy Guide, but... Well, we'll see. Mutas going to find some success here. Astraea has a few extra probes to spare. He can afford to lose a dozen or so. Obviously, you don't want to do it for free, but... The Stalker's into the main. Looks like Dark gonna make good on that dozen. And then some. Looks like some Zealots taken out. Not anticipating this, there is not a Stargate at all on the field right now. Warprism in the main base, though. Uncontested, those are not charge lots. They're just slow lots at the moment. Now expect some of us in the wreckage, brothers. No. The Mutas will come back to defend the Warpers. I'm not gonna... Oh, that's way too late, right? Yes. Bit of a disappointing recall. And now suddenly Dark has map control again. And Estrella runs the risk of being pinned back into his base by the Mutas... The Lings, the Roach Ravager. I don't believe there are any Bane Lings. He's building double Stargate begrudgingly. He does not seem... So that's another game where double Stargate will be required for one reason or another. 
Dark just keeps making mutas. Astrea is, uh... Well, now it seems like he's respecting it, but there's going to be 35 mutas out there. Oh, my. Picks off another one. Man, it's going to take quite a while to get enough phoenixes to deal with that easily. Or at all. Easily is, is definitely not really in the cards right now. But Astrea has 92 army supply. He's got plus two ground weapons done. And it's about as good as it's going to get for quite a while until he's able to get that phoenix count up. Been hanging out on those four bases. Dark does not have a hive. A conspicuous absence. Phoenix production will continue. You need at least like six or eight in order to deal with that many mutas. Yeah, even the splash damage from the mutas is an existential threat. The glaive's just bouncing through. There's so much damage coming out. Does Dark have an infestation pit? No. So that means he is locked into this. He's just fighting the stalkers. He's trying to take a ground battle when he can. And he's building 10 more mutas because uh, mutas can fly. Stalkers um, have a conspicuous lack of that ability. A lot of conspicuous things so far this cast, apparently. Not sure why that is. But Dark is saying, I can bring all of my mutas to bear, but you can't bring all your stalkers. And Estrella just refuses to build Archons. He's hiding the phoenixes. Maybe... Maybe he wants to surprise Dark with that phoenix range? And just wipe out all the mutas at once instead of giving him time to react? I have to assume that's the play. As if you see two, four phoenixes, you can start building corruptors, you can start transitioning out. But if eight, ten phoenixes come out, he might be able to wipe out the entire flock. And the cannons at the natural. Phoenix range is nearly done. Plus one air weapons alongside it. Infestation pit just now finishing. The Mutas will fly into the main and, and Astrea, well, seconds before Phoenix range. That's still so many Mutas. If you could get the Fleet Beacon. Oh, no. Okay, it's done. It's done. He's targeting the Fleet Beacon, but it's too late. Phoenix range is done. But he's on top of the Phoenixes. There's only so much real estate to work with. The Muta count is so damn high, but it's dwindling by the second as the ranged Phoenixes are just so insanely good against them. They cut them out of the sky. Dark has now... He's lost more mutas than I've seen in, like, the last dozen series. He's building 23 more mutas! This madman! That seems like a massive muta risk. But, at this point... Well, there's not many more options. He's not even bothering with corruptors. He wants to swarm this army. And the phoenixes are not here quite yet. There's a single Archon, but no, that's not enough. That's not remotely close to enough. That's not even the same zip code as enough. Dark manages to lose 70-something mutas. And we're all tied up. Well. Astrea drags it back. As Dark caught off guard by Astrea's commitment there. Though still a bit of a dicey one overall. I think Astrea. I've seen it before. He has a... A concerning... Uh... Resistance to going for the Phoenixes when he sees the Mutas. I think he's trying not to get played. Because a lot of players will... Make like five, eight, ten Mutas and then switch into Roaches. Or just a huge ground army. Um... Jimmy... Well, Dark, I think, was attempting to block with a proxy hatch. We have to talk. But now, instead, he's just stolen the gas. He says, well, I'm going to get something. And then goes three hatch. All right. Well, here we are. <laughs> um, if I can't have it, neither can you.
<clears throat> I'm thinking. It's dangerous and painful, actually. But that build, like, Australia, that, that feels like a one-off, kind of. Speaking of one-off builds, what is this? Oh, what are we doing now? He's doing a proxy gate with no tech. This seems like exactly what Dark wants him to do by stealing the gas. Just some sort of crazy all-in. He's hiding a gate in his main. Is this just a four gate? Wait, can I count? One. With two in production. Three! Three gates. Um... With a robo on the way. I don't know. This is dangerous. It feels like Astraea is freestyling here. Like, the Nexus first build felt plant. Like, something Astraea has practiced. I don't know if you want to freestyle with Dark. Alright. DJ Dark. Dropping the base, as always. But he's gonna bring some extra adepts in. The Rotorin just started. The Stalker? Uh-oh. Wait, that's not a wall, right? <laughs> There's no one- ah! No! The oldest and most tried mistake. Oh no. He just needed a wall off. If he did, the, the Zerglings are on the other side- Like, they're on the wrong side of the map. The Adepts are at the natural, but Dark is building 20 Zerglings. And the Stalker will be taken out. The Adepts make it into the main. They're gonna find a lot of damage. But, oh no. Targeting drones. Dark only has 29 drones. I don't know how Dark finds himself in these scenarios. He, he's down 15 workers right now. Again. And, and even though he seems to have a bead on what Astraea wants to do, like, he knows there's something out there. Look at him scouring the map. Just absolutely covering the mini-map. He hasn't found it yet. I think he will get there. But I don't know if he can actually kill that. Oh my god. He's scouted everywhere but exactly where the pylon is. He will find it now. He's just gonna fight. He doesn't care. Finds a bit of surface area. Kills the gate. Oh. One of the adepts shaded and was picked up by the prism. The other one was, uh, body blocking for it. Dark builds six overlords at a time. Astraea's also supply block. This game has gone intensely sideways here. And double Stargate. <laughs> All roads seem to lead to double Stargate. These are some, like, uh, convoluted, confusing, and somewhat... Uh, dangerous roads. But they all lead to double Stargate eventually. Sooner or later. Oh, the queens. Adeps managed to make it into the natural. He, he decides to cancel the shade. Probably a smart move. The Zerglings all have to come back to defend. Or Prism coming in for the hot pickup. Gets another drone. He's gonna try to shade out. But the War Prism might not make it itself. Don't get too cute. No! Oh my god, what HP! And Dark is waiting. Astraea doesn't see it. Oh. Susan, you stand right there. You stay, you keep watch. Anything else? No, just... We'll see. Dark is willing to wait. Oh my god, it's gonna work. Oh my god. Oh my god, he gets it! Oh, I told you, Susan, god damn it. Stop complaining next time. I don't, sorry. I know. Dark commits a queen and takes out the prism, which means that he can focus all his efforts on dealing with the actual army. And somehow we jump back and Dark is up 10 workers. What are we doing here? I'm so, I, this has been just a topsy-turvy road. Double Star Phoenix. There is actually a Spire on the way. 
Is there even a twilight? No! The overseer will not make it. Though, it feels like a, uh... Does he have any info? No. So Estrella is hard countering what Dark has yet to do. Which is the Mutus. Will Dark anticipate this somehow? If Dark builds Corruptors first, that's like... But either genius and or map hacks, because right now it's pretty clear that Astray is up to something. But like, why would you commit? He built the double star before Dark ever built a spire. So the ultimate next level mind game here. Potentially at play, but Dark is not even bothering with building Mutas. He's getting a bunch of Ravagers. He's sold on the idea. The thing is, if he doesn't build Mutas, that he has nothing at all to deal with the Phoenixes. Absolutely nothing. I mean, he's got four queens, but that's close enough to... Okay, that's enough. Just go. Just go with the Phoenixes, Estrella. What are you waiting for? I don't actually know. A hallucinated Phoenix. He spots the Spire. He's still holding on to them. Oh, well, he's keeping his powder dry. But... Well, he's letting Dark commit to all-out Ravager Ling here. There's not much of a ground army at all. He just started plus one weapons. Oh my god. Astrea has 13 Phoenixes. But... Oh no. Well, he can pick up the Roach Ravager, but it's a bit late. Dark is just building Zerglings. Oh no. It's a disaster. Yes, Astrea will chip away at all this. But he needed boots on the ground. Not to pick up individual roaches and ravagers into the air. He he actually had a great and beautiful counter to what Dark was doing. And then he waited so long it was taken off the counter. The bar closed. He banged on the door, said, let me in! And Dark said, okay, and inside were a bunch of roaches and blings that mauled him to death. Dark with the classic go fucking kill him strategy. As Astrea just waited far too long to press his uh, perceived advantage. At some point, you need to match him on the field. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Oh, it hurts a bit. As an American StarCraft II player, there are dozens of us, by the way. Um, seeing Dark essentially mentally strangle him. Estrella had all the right calls, and he made them at the wrong times, it seems like. And Dark, well, the final boss, survives and fights again. Well, I hope that made your day a little bit better. Uh, made you think a little bit. Maybe think about uh, if you got the means and motivation, checking out Patreon or uh, YouTube membership. Uh, but I hear liking and subscribing is still free for now. And if you haven't yet checked out the second channel for streams, more VODs, more gameplay, just more. All right? You want more? There you go. And if you want more casts, we well, can check out Recommended would be awesome. That's what YouTube recommends. I recommend to you to make make sure more eyeballs see them. Don't say it like that. We're not saying it like that. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Thank I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill. And check outside your base for Proxy Hatch. And inside your base. And just everywhere. He's everywhere.